virtual school year. And I'm going to try to um, not repeat some of the things that have already been said. However, some of the things that have been said have been just absolutely awesome. So here's what I want to start with. This idea of making it memorable. This is a year that no one will ever forget. These kids will remember the year that they spent at home, the, the year that school closed and they had to come home. They will always remember this. So you have this ability now to make these memories good or bad or different or unique. Like you have this really great opportunity to think about your values on education. Why is education even important in your family? Is a school something that you do because you have to do it? Is it about having a job? Is it about a career? Is it about in our family, everyone is a doctor? You know, like why is it important in your family? What types of things do you, could your kids learn? Like what kind of opportunities do they have this year? What are some things that you're saying, you know, the schools never teach you about this. I wish I could teach you about this. And now you're like, wait, you're here with me all the time. I guess I could teach you about something. What about cooking? I will tell you, I asked my middle schoolers and who are in summer school, what is something that you've learned while you've been home? So since we've had this time at home, what is something that you've learned that you didn't know before? And almost all of them said cooking. That was their number one answer that they weren't a cook before, but now they are. Um, outdoor activities. They've learned how to ride bikes. They learned how to skateboard. All of these things that they had an opportunity to learn now, but they didn't have it before. And the last question, these like really big questions to think about as parents, could this time make your family closer? Like, is this a time that you could actually use to make your family closer together? So I've tried to like tap into some of the great homeschool ideas. While virtual school is not homeschool, it's not the same thing at all, um, here are some of these great homeschool things that I've heard. I've heard people say things like, I know my kids so well now. I know how they learn. And now we get a chance to see our kids learn. Where we, before, we didn't get a chance to see it. Like they did all the learning in the building and then they came home and sometimes they were like, I learned nothing at school. We did nothing, nothing happened, right? Or sometimes they um, just give us a hard time because they're tired now and we have to do this homework. And of course they don't remember any of the things that the teacher taught them. Maybe their homework is already finished by the time they get home. But now we really get to see them learn. And we get to know these questions like, what hours do our kids work best? Do they work best in the morning? Do they work best at night? What do they like best about school? What do they need to de-school from? That's a homeschool word that I learned, de-school. So what are some things that they've picked up in school that are bad ideas they gotta get rid of? Like, I'm too shy to ask a question. Everyone will laugh at me if I ask for help. These are the things we gotta get rid of now, right? Now that you're home, there's nobody to see you raise your hand. We have to like, no, ask the question, stop being shy, we can do this. What are some things that they might really love that you have an opportunity to supplement them with that maybe you couldn't before, like documentaries, field trips, presentations. They do the presentations, not you. Uh, book reports, workbooks, YouTube, everybody said YouTube, activity centers as these little independent activities that they can do. So these might be things that maybe they didn't have to do at school, but now that they're home, hey, you just finished reading a book, do a presentation for us. Why do you think it was a good book? What was great about it? What was your favorite part? You know, give us five minutes and stand in front of the family and tell us. These are great ideas, but they didn't have that opportunity before and now they do. One thing that you can kind of replicate that happened at school was this PBIS program. So PBIS is this very famous program. Many, many schools use it across the country where we are rewarding students for good things that they do. So we're trying to minimize the punishments and the consequences, and we are going to do this teach, remind, reward. So you teach them what you want them to do. I want you to sit and focus on your schoolwork for 30 minutes. You're gonna remind them, right, a million times. Hey, remember, we're gonna try for 30 minutes. Uh, we talk nicely to our sister in this house. We don't yell during work hours. You're gonna remind a lot. There's gonna be lots of restating the goals and reminding and restating expectations. Prepare for it. Like you cannot lose your mind as a parent because you've had to say the same thing three times. I know when I'm in my parent mode, 
the fact that I've had to repeat myself is like irritating, right? How many times do I have to tell you to clean up this room? Like when I'm in my parent mode, when I'm in my teacher mode, I fully expect that I'm going to have to tell them more than once. It, it, they're children. They are not going to learn some whole new system by me telling them one time. So you're going to have to remind them. They're going to praise them. Five positive comments for every one correction. You're going to tell them, good job. Oh my gosh, look how you're doing that. You've been sitting there reading for 10 minutes, 10 more to go. Excellent. You're going to celebrate when there's a goal that is reached. You made your 30 minutes. Awesome. High five. Sometimes the celebrations are small. They're high fives. They're giving me a hug. They're like, okay, let's go outside now. Sometimes your celebrations can be big. It could be cupcakes. It could be, you know, here's $5. Some kids are very money motivated. I don't know if you have the money to support a money motivated kid, but some kids, you know, they'll do it for the money. So their reasons for wanting academic success might not be your reasons. So it's kind of important for you to figure out this too. Like, why do they want it? Do they want it? Because you have to try to tap into what their reasons are. Maybe their reasons are totally those honor roll certificates. It's being uh, acknowledged by the teacher. Maybe it's being acknowledged by you. That's why they want it. Maybe they want it for a totally different reason. But if you know why they want to be successful, then you know how to reward them for what they're doing. So this is what my home office looks like now because I just went with it. I just embraced it. You know, this is new. It's different. Just dig in. We got to go with it, right? So I kind of likened it to when the kids were born and I really thought I was going to be able to like keep my living room and keep my dining room. Everything was going to be the same, but I was going to have a nursery for the babies, right? And we found out very quickly that they take over your house, that all of a sudden you have a swing and a playpen. The diapers do not stay in the nursery. You need them on every floor, right? So they kind of take over. I, I went with it this time too, that I, um, I just said, okay, if this is where I have to teach, then this is where I have to teach. So I had to go with it. Part of going with it is also this organization idea. So just like um, Dr. Johnson was saying, is that Deetra, right? Um, I was saying uh, about checklists and planners that I use all of these things and I've had to start using these things for the kids too. So I tried a very like rigid schedule, if you can see over here, like my eighth grader is going to be doing this and sixth grader and they're going to rotate. Um, for a couple of weeks, they really liked it. And then they started saying, but I don't feel like doing Spanish right now. I'd rather be doing dance. And they kind of wanted some flexibility. So then we kind of went to a checklist idea. These checklists get posted. Absolutely what Dr. Johnson said. They get posted on the wall and um, they have to come and check it off. Now, I have one kid especially who loves to be the first one who's finished her checklist. And that's that kind of their reasons for wanting it might not be your reasons. So when I post that checklist, she wants to get everything done. She wants that bragging rights that I'm the first one to finish my checklist. So I found a whole new like incentive mode for her that I didn't know existed. The planners. I have a kid always did really, really well in school. So I figured she was really organized. She know how to get, knows how to get things done. Apparently had no clue how to use a planner. So what you see here in this planner is that took weeks of training on how to use a planner to get her to write things down in the planner and then cross them off when she was finished. So you would think that that's something, oh, kids know that. Kids don't know that. So what we have to do is we have to teach them these things that we think that they should intrinsically know. They don't know this. Um, here's a fun idea. I think it's fun. If you know that your kids are gonna be using Zoom and Google Meet or something, then let them schedule a Zoom uh, hangout session with a friend or with grandma or with something and let them set it up because they're gonna to need to be able to work the controls. They need to be able to know how this thing works so that when it's time for class, they don't need you to log in for them, that they can log in for themselves. So make it fun now, you know, it's just friends, just family, just hanging out. But then when the school year starts, that's one less phone call or it's one less, you know, yelling from another room, mom, it's not working, it won't let me log in because now they have experience with logging in themselves. And along with that, they need your expertise on some things. So one of the things that you kind of want to model for them 
or you're going to start saying aloud all these things that adults really say for themselves all the time. But now you're going to say them out loud. Things like, I can't watch TV because I'm not finished with my work, right? We know these things as adults. We know that sometimes we have to stay up late to get work done. We have to wake up early to finish an assignment. Our kids need to hear this idea of, I know how to manage my time or things have to get done. Even if I'm tired now, that's not the end of it. Because I know sometimes we've had children who say, I don't feel like doing this anymore. I'm tired. I'm over it. Okay, but that's not the end. So you're over it right now. Does that mean that you're going to take a break and come back? You're going to go to sleep and do it in the morning. Like you have to sometimes give them these options. And if they see you do it, then now it becomes normal. Because I think sometimes the kids will feel a little bit punished. Like, man, I'm the only one that has to wake up early and do this work. No, we all have to wake up early and do work sometimes. You know, that's part of having assignments that are due. One of the things that you can do is um, show them how to organize their technology. So split screens, I showed my class how to do this year, and that was like a game changer. And I'll show you this in a second. I'll show you now. Where on one side, you have your Zoom tab, and then on the other side, you... Um, have your, we use Desmos a lot for math or your Google Docs or whatever kind of application they're on. So they can still see the teacher on one side, but then on the other side, they are um, being able to answer the questions and things like that. Having all the tabs ready. So I got in the habit of telling the students, we're going to be on Google Docs, we're going to be on Desmos, and we're going to be on Khan Academy. Those are the three sites we're going to be on. Go to them now get them ready, split your screen, and now we can go. That was a total game changer for students, knowing how to have their tabs organized, knowing how to have their technology organized. Even things like um, organizing your uh, Google Drive to have files and folders. What are you labeling these assignments? Because kids will do an assignment and they can't find it. They know they did it, but now they're looking through a million different files and they don't know where it is. They don't know what they called it. So things like that that we know how to do because we've been doing this for years, they need our expertise with things like this. And then we have the struggling students. The students who struggle most here are sometimes the ones that struggled most in the classroom, but not always. I've had some students who were, you know, kind of okay. Sometimes they struggled in class, but then when we got to uh, learning virtually, they took off. Oh my goodness, they were wonderful when it was virtual. Everything was done ahead of time. So I'm trying to figure out like, how did this work so well for you, but for other kids, not so much. And what I've learned from like researching is that it's that self-regulation, the motivation and the self-regulation. That's what the experts are saying is the, is the thing that makes a difference. Self-regulation questions like, how many minutes have I spent on homework? So do you have a kid that is just writing down anything to tell you that it's done? Or do you have a kid who, and you're gonna have to like, you know, kind of prompt these things before they become automatic. Wait a minute, I finished that in three minutes. That probably wasn't my best work. How many school videos have I watched? Now I know they spend time on YouTube. How much of that time was spent? Did they watch anything that was academic? Because a lot of times your teachers are going to put videos for them to watch in the daily lessons. They're going to say, well, here's a video you can watch if you don't understand. Here's a follow-up video. How many of those videos have you seen? Have I asked a teacher for help? Have I raised my hand? Did I put a question in the chat box? Did I email a teacher? Have I tried to reduce my own distractions? Did I turn the music off, as everyone said? Did I turn the TV off? Did I try for a different seat? So we are going to ask these kids questions because we want them, especially the older kids, to start asking themselves. So one of the things that I did with the regulation questions, I might have them up posted, like Dr. Johnson was saying, have them up posted somewhere where the kids can see them. So I'm not constantly reminding them but the reminder is there. Did you ask a teacher for help today? <laughs> Did you call your, it says uncle or aunt, your mentor? Do they have a check-in person 
that is not mom or dad, that does not live in the house, that you don't have these, you know, constant butting heads, you know, clean your room, uh, stop eating junk food, do your homework. You know, sometimes you need somebody else to ask the question. Uh, did you ask them, you know, did you talk, call them and see what's going on with them? Did they ask you, you know, how's school? And then over here, I have this picture of a Zoom checklist. So I have one of those kids who has a very hard time sitting still, got to, has to get up and move. So I made a checklist. So if you're in a Zoom and her Zooms last week were like two, three hours. So here you go. Ask a question. When you do it, check it off. Did you get a drink of water? Move to a different seat. Draw a picture. Do 10 jumping jacks. You know, I don't care if she gets up and moves as long as she's listening. You know, did you write down two vocabulary words that you learned in class today? So these types of things, um, in my mind, really help. And one of the things that I saw her do, it was fabulous that I saw her do, was play with Legos. That when she got out a Lego set, her engagement with that lesson, it skyrocketed when she got the Legos out to play with. I wouldn't have thought that Legos and like playing with something would have helped her, but it's a fidget. It's just like the stress balls. It is just like these things that everyone's been saying that the fidgets that help. So hers was Legos that definitely helped. Um, for learning pods, these teaching and tutoring sessions, I'm going to say they should be virtual. I'm not supporting any kind of in-person learning right now in August 2020. But even with a virtual session, what you want to do is you want to have your kids be able to work with others. So even if they're getting on a Zoom with two or three friends, with cousins, with classmates, and they're just sitting there doing their homework, but you don't feel like you're doing it by yourself anymore because now you're on a Zoom with somebody else and they're doing homework too. And you know, so now it's not just you in your house by yourself doing work. Now you can see other people doing work too. And it also kind of gives you this um, peer pressure, right? This positive peer pressure. Hey, everybody else is still reading. I should still read too. 20 minutes of reading time. Well, if everybody gets in at the same time and we all start at the same time, I can't quit first. Oh man, no, I got to keep reading. So now you have this positive peer pressure. Mentors, think about people who are like family members, maybe people inside of, of school, people outside of school who can just check in. Teachers, counselors, same thing. People who can just check in and especially people who can absolutely talk. Like um, Mary was saying about the Esau students, how if they interact, that it has to be back and forth. Like listening to the videos, listening to the Zooms, that's great. But you want a time where the kids can talk back and forth with the teachers and see, it just, it does not have to be like a very serious, can you explain how to solve linear equations to me? It could be something really like, you know, what are we learning next week in class? Oh, really? That's what we're learning. And the teacher or the counselor or the mentor should say, how did you do with that um, quiz we had last week? And get, have them give a chance to say, like, I really got it. I didn't get it at all. You know, so you just want them to be able to talk to somebody who can check in, who can keep motivating them, keep pushing them to keep working. And this is the last thing, you control the tone of your family. You control the tone of your household. The three things that you really want these kids to learn is resilience, self-advocacy, and patience. Every day is not going to be a good day. We know this, teach them this. When it's a bad day, it's not the end of the world. We knew all the days were not gonna be good. It is a global pandemic. We do not have good days all the time. Some days we're tired of being in the house. Some days we're tired of not seeing any of our friends or our family members. It gets to us too. Every day is not gonna be a good day, but maybe tomorrow will be. You know, some days, yeah, let's, let's scrap it for today, but maybe tomorrow will be, you gotta bounce back. Um, have them call or email their teachers for themselves, especially, I would say starting with the elementary kids, but especially middle and high schoolers, that uh, their first line should always be that they emailed their teacher and asked for help, and then they reported back to you what the teacher said or what they asked. And then that patience, it's new, it will take time. You know, sometimes we get frustrated, but these kids get so frustrated when they try a new app, when they try a new website and they can't figure out how to submit their assignments, they can't figure out how to make it work. Like they get very, very frustrated. So teaching them that kind of patience 
is definitely important. You got this. I know a lot of times parents are like, I can't teach. I can't work with my kids here. I can't do this. My kids can't, you know, can't is, is, is a changeable word. So let's try to erase the can't work on it because some, just because something has not been done before does not mean that it cannot be done. Just because we've never done this doesn't mean it won't work. You know, we could do it. We just, be, I mean, we are pioneers. We are totally doing something new, which is kind of exciting if it, you know, wasn't a global pandemic. Um, contact information. I'm on YouTube, Reeves Rainbows. There's my email address. And uh, that's it. Dr. Reeves, there was a uh, question about how you s split screen with okay. one monitor. So here's what, um, here's what I do. Let me share my screen again. So, so what I do is I take my, um, my Zoom screen to the gallery view like this. And I'm just using my mouse to make one window smaller until it fits. So I don't know if on a Mac it's different than on um, a Chromebook or on a PC. But so I took my Zoom to gallery and then I um, just resized my other screen that was open. Yeah, on the Mac, it's sort of the same. If you go all the way up, you have the red light um, and the green light, and you just push the green light to exit full screen. Uh, so um, I hope that answers your question. If it does not answer your question, uh oh. And I'm back. If that does not answer. Call her and tell her that we're busy. All right, that's my niece calling. Uh, that is Lily calling because the only person that thinks that they have to be so insistent and you know acquire my attention when they want it is no one except for Lilia Barnes. Anyway, uh, if you if that didn't answer your question, then. Uh, Dr. Reeves' information also will be sent out. Reach out to her um, through the, the social medias that she shared through her email. And I'm positive that she would um, help you uh, a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with that. Dara, we also had a question for you. It was, where did you purchase the green bands and how much? I purchased the, um, the bouncy bands, the uh, chair fidget bands on Amazon. And you can get them as low as $12 for a three pack, but the best bet was a 12 pack that was 25. I don't know that you have a need for 12 at home, but you can get them as low as $12 on Amazon. And Dr. Reeves, you still actually have the floor. So can you share your screen again and let us see that um, the ending part where it's your contact information, please. And yes, all of the recordings have been, uh, they, they've, I'm sorry, all of the sessions have been recorded individually. So I'm going to post my email address there just so you can reach out to me um, if there's something that you missed immediately and you need a response to but i'm definitely going to be figuring out how how i can make sure in a thank you for attending email we list all of our presenters emails and um social media handles and all that jazz If anyone else has a question, um, we are we are all into it. So you can unmute yourself and uh, ask a question if if you'd like, or you can continue sharing in the chat. I know that we're already to eight o'clock, 
but um, we promise question and answer. So if you have something that you want to ask, again, just throw it in the chat or um, open your mic and share. Going once, twice, three times a lady. I wanted nope. to um, I wanted to say one thing that I think I kind of I, I took lots of notes because I have a kid in middle, high, and elementary school. So everything that people said, I'm like writing everything down. Um, but one of the things that I feel like everybody said was about asking for help and things that you need. And I just want to tell all the parents, like, please be patient and have grace and uh, for the teachers but feel free to like push them to offer suggestions to them because we want to do what's best and no, none of us have ever done this before. So if you're telling us that um, my child works best at night and they need to be able to move from seat to seat, now all of a sudden the teacher's like, well, maybe I shouldn't require that they have to sit still with the cameras on. Like now, now we're thinking about different things because different teachers are gonna have different requirements but they haven't really, um, they have to hear from you too because everybody wants to do the best thing. And if you don't tell them what the best thing for your child is or the best thing for your family, they're not gonna know. So please feel free to like tell the teachers that, you know, that my kid loves your class, but you know, uh, they need to, to be recorded so they can listen to it twice. So they love your class, but you know, they need something else. I wanted to share just um, something that we did for our mentors uh, group that I was so excited about. As soon as we are, um, the city of Columbus made an announcement that we they will be um, doing the virtual, all virtual opening and the cry across everywhere, you know, research base, of course, too, but just general knowledge. Everyone was saying, get a planner, get a planner. So we got these cute little planners for our mentees. And this is mine, but, uh, but we got them personalized and um, the logo on it. So I am so excited about these. But I, Dara, when you were speaking, I was like, I'm super excited about it. I love it. But I hope the students also love it because you know, I'm, if they say they don't, I'm definitely going to be like, but it's great. All right. <laughs> it was my idea, but it has your name on it. So we'll, we'll see. But um, we are definitely on the organizer train by, um, we, we bought it because they are sometimes really, really expensive. We bought it, we personalized it. And um, just from what you were sharing, Nikki, um, I've got to figure out how in our mentor sessions, I teach them how to use it because it is an over assumption that everybody knows how to use these, these mamma jammas. So note to self. I think one of the important things we have to remember is that time management is a skill that has to be taught. Our students absolutely are not going to figure this out on their own. And it was a struggle to teach it when we were in the classroom, but now that they are pretty much self-driven at home, this isn't something that's, that's natural for anybody. So we really have to make an effort to make sure that we are teaching children how to manage their time. If no one else has anything to say, anything else to, to chime in, you have uh, my information. If, um, drop me a line, tell me what you missed. Um, again, I will be speaking with each of the presenters personally about um, when their slides is requested, if that's something that they want me to share. Um, this was just the first of many. Thank you, thank you, thank you, presenters. Thank you, thank you, thank you, parents. Um, keep an eye out for what we've got um, next. I'm fingers crossed. Um, I'm hoping that our next parent empowerment series is going to talk about um, how to keep your children safe online because uh, we out here. They, on, they are on the web. So um, 
we want to sort of just empower parents with some basic information about how to make sure that their fun time doesn't turn disastrous. So thank you again, everybody, everybody. Have a great evening. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. This is great. <laughs>